hello and welcome back to the Geneva Motor Show. It's all happened, the car has been unveiled and guess where I'm sitting? I'm in the world's first diesel plug-in hybrid. Let's have a look at the big moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome Stefan Jacobi, President and CEO, Volvo Car Corporation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a historic day for us. The Volvo V60 plug-in hybrid is entirely a new breed. It is the world premiere of the second generation of hybrid technology. On top of being first of the second generation hybrids, it is charged with Volvo's ingenuity that makes it truly unique in the automotive world. The V60 plug-in hybrid has been designed around customers' need and lifestyle. Well, that was the big moment of the unveil earlier today by the Chief Executive Officer of Volvo, Stefan uh, Jacobi. And we streamed it live. We streamed everything live to you today. This is our last broadcast of the day, especially for our Facebook friends. We've been delighted that you've joined us today, but this is the opportunity. And we're going to take a proper look at this V60 car so you understand what it is that Volvo are bringing to market and why it's so important. And I can illustrate that to you by looking at these three buttons. I don't know how clearly you're going to be able to see them, but these are the buttons in the central console that make the difference between this car and every other car on the market. The button on the left is pure. And that means if I press it, this will be a pure electric car. We'll be using any fossil fuel, plug it in overnight on a four to five hour charge, you'll get a 50 kilometer range out of that, which we understand statistically means that most European uh, journeys are gonna be within that during the day. So you could probably run it electrically most of the time. Uh, the middle option is hybrid for your just out of town, the battery's not going to quite last and you want the diesel electric to diesel to keep the electric uh, engine going. And finally, the power option. Let's say you want to hook up a caravan and flog down to the south coast of France. You press that button, you have a pretty powerful 215 brake horsepower family hatchback. You know, it seems to me these buttons are like for the past, present and future of cars built into one. Uh, a no compromise option at one end and the carbon free uh, neutral option at the other. Right, let's get out. And the reason I want to get out is because I want you to meet somebody here. This man is Carl Johan Ekman. It's really Carl Johan, this is your baby, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. <laughs> You've been involved in the uh, in the car really from the earliest yes, days. from the first thinking to what we have now. Today. So first of all, today you saw it being unveiled by your this chief executive officer. Day. A big day for you? This is the big day. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, well, let's have a look. The first thing I think we should do is open up the tailgates and have a look in uh, to the, see the battery. Now, I should say this is not how the production model is going to be. This is for the show, isn't it? You'll actually yeah, get yeah, to access this, the battery. Uh, extra plug-in uh, visualization is for this show just only. But the thing is that we have packed the battery in the trunk well ahead of the crumble zone. And we have had good and decent package of the whole luggage compartment with good storage capacity left also. It's a pretty hefty battery. I mean, we're talking about 10 kilowatts in all. I think you use about 7 kilowatts. Eight then. we use uh, for driving and so on, and it will, well, serve you up to 50 kilometers driving distance. And if you were with us uh, earlier today, we did talk about the safety aspect of that, which has its own peculiar uh, th challenges, really, for the organisation. Well, let's walk around this way because another important aspect of this car is this lead here. Now, Carl Johan, there's something that I think we just need to impress upon people is, yeah. is what's at the under, other end of that. It's very easy. You just take this, plug it into the normal socket in the wall, and you charge this car in roughly four and a half hours night time. So obviously in the UK, I'd have three pins yeah, yeah. there, it but in Europe- For each market. For each one, and I literally can drive the car up to my house, run an extension lead out through yeah. the garage and plug it in. Yes, no preparation more than that. And in an ideal world, take it to work and plug it in there as well. That could give you a lot of extra electricity, yes. <laughs> okay, well, let's carry on around the car. I mean, the V60, in terms of the shape, how does it differ from the diesel version? Is it pretty much the same shape? Yeah, the shape, the basic shape is the same, but we have tried to differentiate it to some extent so people would recognize it as something different, that it stands out. Okay, well, 
it's got those sleek Volvo lines that we're getting used to. And there's something else that we did want to show you here. Um, it doesn't look very much, does it? It's a diesel filler cap, but it's yeah. quite significant for you that you've got this option here. Yeah, I mean, the normal problem with electric cars is that you have this range anxiety, and that isn't the case with this car. You just have it fill up with diesel, and you can drive as normal with it. You don't have to think about it, just drive and enjoy it. I like that expression, range anxiety. You can tell that this is somebody who's been thinking long and hard from a consumer perspective. We, we heard uh, your boss uh, today, Stefan Jacoby, talking about building cars around the driver, yeah. worrying about whether you're going to make your destination on power. It's clearly been well, it's been addressed with this car, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah you, it will work very well for you. You can drive it daily on electricity, but you can travel far away in the weekend, so travel to places you've never been before. You can even tow a trailer behind a car which has this capacity. So you don't have to compromise. It will serve you on a daily basis in a lot of different perspectives. OK, well, we're going to get a prominent blogger's point of view in a moment, but let's uh, show you a few pictures in detail of the Volvo V60. You know, it's been a busy day here on the Volvo stand with the unveiling of the new car. And I hope you've appreciated um, our Facebook friends, a real close up and personal tour of the day here. This is press day, of course, at the Geneva Motor Show. Calm down a little bit now. And I think it's a chance to reflect a little bit. Robert Llewellyn is a prominent blogger about uh, such issues back in the UK. You might recognize him. Of course, he was Crichton on Red Dwarf, my childhood hero, Robert. <laughs> try and make myself sound slightly younger than you not really true <laughs> robert let's Usually. let's try and take in um, the whole thing you've seen a lot of the cars here where does this v60 fit into what you've seen today i mean i think it is it's really exciting because it's actually pushed the technology a step further it, it's taken all the things that we've in a sense got used to with hybrids the, the amount of co2 they produce the the range they get on the fuel they use all those sort of things it's it's jumped it ahead so if this car did roughly the same as let's say the toyota prius then you'd go well it's good that volvo's done it but it's nothing that spectacular this is a spectacular further leap the fact that it's a plug-in hybrid for one thing so that it will run on batteries alone for uh, it was a 40, around 40 kilometers yeah. and the fact that the co2 output is minute even in comparison with something as low as a prius and it, it you know you can drive it anywhere you don't have to plug it in all those things it has a lot of advantages really big big change and Carl Johan said to me earlier that if you're operating this in a typical environment using the electric a lot to go to work, you're probably looking at filling it up maybe once a month. Yes. That is a key that thing, is isn't it? It's extraordinary because, I mean, that's one thing that everyone is noticing now, that filling your car up twice a week is an extremely expensive thing to do, and this makes a really big difference. So I'm really excited about it. I think it's a, and it's a fantastic-looking car. It's a very handsome car. Uh, Robert, thank you very much for the moment. Uh, we've been taking your questions and comments on our Facebook page all day today, and we have the man here who's responsible for the V60, so it would be uh, remiss of me not to put these questions to him, despite the fact some of them are quite difficult. And the first one, uh, from Andrew William Dixon, Ryan Price, Glenn Rhodes, Phil Salmon, and others have all asked, nice car, when will it be coming to the United States of America? Well, we are not bringing this car to the US, but we start to develop the technology to have it in hand for the future. So we have to take it in steps, day by day, and see what happens in the future. But this car is a starting point for Europe, and then we take it onwards after that. 
Now, I know that is going to be disappointing to a lot of people in America. They will want to see this car there. We should appreciate that the, the rules are quite complicated in America. And I hadn't appreciated that a lot of diesel engines in Europe would not pass in about 12 of the states in America. And you really can't bring a car to market unless it's going to be in all 50 states, can you? No, no, the and uh, therefore, probably for US, we will go for a gasoline petrol variant, yeah. which this isn't. So we have to take it in steps, as I said. Diesel's not a huge thing in the States, is it? Okay, another question here. This is from, uh, well, three people have asked this question. Christian Eriksson, uh, Belinda Rydell and Ingrid Berg have all variously asked from their particular countries how much is the V60 hybrid going to cost? The pricing isn't decided yet, uh, but we hope that people will buy it because they like it and they want it and not due to that it's cheap or not pricey. It's not going to be. I mean, we should say it's a luxury car, isn't it? Yeah. So it's, it's not going to be priced at a dirt cheap thing. I mean, no, no. you're not prepared to estimate, I can imagine, but it's, no, it's going to be. Point. But if you're filling it up once a month with diesel, uh... <laughs> I still don't think you're going to. Nah, that is not the thing with this car. The thing to buy this car is that you like it, love it and want to be seen in it. Yeah, absolutely. OK, um, a couple more. How much will it cost to charge the battery? Actually, I think, Robert, you could probably answer this. How much will it cost to charge the battery? You know the figures on this, don't you? Well, I, I only know them from my own experience of another all-electric car. I mean, just to give you a rough idea of that, I did 9,000 miles in it, a Mitsubishi iMeve, and it cost £122 to charge it. So that, so you have to, you can do the maths yourself because it's complicated. Yeah. But I mean, I would say it, it is in the, it is in the sub pound to yeah. charge the battery on this car, We're, particularly at night if you're using uh, cheap rate electricity. It'd be very, very cheap. It's not a, an expensive thing to do. So David, prob I mean, probably in the sort of 60 to 70 pence a night bracket yes, we're talking the about there. Yeah, um, another one, Tom Fotheringham, when is the V60 plug-in going to go on sale in the UK? I want one, exclamation mark. <laughs> That's nice, one. very good. Uh, we will start production by the end of 2012 and in steps the car will be available in Europe from that point. Okay. Carl Johan Ekman, congratulations on the car today. Thanks Big a lot. day for you. I think you probably deserve a beer now. <laughs> Robert Llewellyn, <laughs> you've been a star for us today. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining us. I've now got to run and get on an aeroplane. You can run. Well, the airport is about 200 yards away, so that's quite useful. Um, and I want to say a big thank you to you as well. This has been uh, the first time we've done this for our Facebook friends, and we've enjoyed it very much. We really do value your feedback. So every comment you've got about the V60, everything you hear about Volvo, please do keep those comments going. We very much hope we're going to be doing this again. I'm going to leave you, Martin. You can show off the splendor of the V60, and we'll speak to you next time. Goodbye.